Okay, so today, uh, before we start, just want to remind us from Ezra chapter 6 and verse 3, where, um, you know, they, they talks about Babylon and um, they're actually searching in the store, store rooms or treasures were stored and they find a scroll and in which um, Cyrus had actually issued a decree okay, concerning the house of God, concerning the temple. At Jerusalem. So this is what it reads. I, uh, you know, Ezra chapter six and verse three says, "In the first year of King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations of it be firmly laid." And it gives the measurements. Okay. So what is interesting is. Uh, the order in which the instruction was given. We know that Cyrus, God used Cyrus without him knowing, without him knowing God. And God used, he was an instrument in the, in the hands of God. So it talks about rebuilding the, the, the temple that was destroyed. So it says, let the house be rebuilt. And specifically, if you see, you know, the place where they offered the sacrifices, where they offered sacrifices. And it talks about worship. Right. So in the rebuilding of of the house, in the and I, I might just, just want to say even even in the building up of the house of God, right? Building up of the temple, um, you know, maybe we can say um, in the strengthening, in the building up of uh, the the living stones. You know, what is there uh, crucial is the place of where they offered sacrifices, meaning the worship. The worship part of it, you know, it's very important. So we see this happening. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices. So worship is a one. One of the thing is worship is an important part of uh, of the house of God. Just like all the other things, like prayer and so on. But worship plays a central part because it is total devotion to Him. Right? It's giving of oneself to Him, and if the if the church does that, you know, if the house of God and the people in the house of God do that, when they are totally surrendered, totally in adoration, totally in awe, then it results in um, in a church that's built strong. You know, it results in a body that is that is devoted. It results in a body that is uh, Christ-centered, right? The true essence of worship, like how Jesus taught us that this is true worship, spirit and truth worship. Right, so just want to remind us of that before we um, pray. Right, let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this for the scripture. We thank you for this reminder, Lord, about the rebuilding of the house. And uh, Lord, in different aspects, God, maybe it's our own personal um, lives that needs to be rebuilt. Maybe it's our family. Maybe it's uh, Lord, it's a, it's a church. God, we pray, Lord, even like we see here, let the the place of the offering, um, let it be rebuilt. God, a clear instruction. And so, God, I just pray that even in our own lives, that will be, Lord, re-established. God, if it is not there, Lord, let it be re may be re-established. Father God, firmly, God, and just like the way you want it, O Master, so that our lives can, Lord, be an offering. Lord, be a, a sacrificial offering, a living sacrifice unto you, Father God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We commit this day and all these sessions into your mighty hands. We pray that you would speak to us and uh, that you would lead us, Lord, uh, further and higher and deeper, God, into the things that you want us to, Lord, receive and to walk in. We thank you in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So, um, so we've been looking at different aspects of, uh, you know, the organizational aspects of worship ministry, right? So um, some of those important things that we need to look at, uh, we need to put in place. Um, so one of the things that we need to see is that, uh, you know, these things are repetitive. Okay, in the sense, you know, people come and people leave. Right? People come into the church, people go, and there are. Uh, new people coming in, there are new people who are joining the team, um, and so 
it's repetitive in the sense that we need to teach this over and over and over again or reiterate the importance of this over and over again to every person who joins the worship ministry okay so we should never get tired of it you know sometimes we think like how many times i've repeated this you know why should i repeat it again this year right we, the thing is that there are people who have come in newly there are people who have not yet grasped it right so we need to be able to uh set aside some time even during the year calendar year um to reiterate these things right so we're looking at development of worship ministry and we looked at commitment we looked at uh, personal accountability right uh, and how it is an expression uh, certain things of um, expressions of personal accountability you know meaning we say that okay i'm accountable i'm accountable to the uh to the lord i'm accountable to the ministry leader or the team and all that but how does it actually work out in practical life you know it's it's one thing to say i'm committed and another thing to actually live it out it's one thing to say i'm you know i'm accountable to so and so or such and such a you know uh, uh, ministry leader and all that but how does it look in practical life you know those are some things that we 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 saw in last class right okay so uh, today uh we're just going to look at you know if there was a pathway right if there was a map if there was a pathway manual for nurturing worshipers you know so you see the emphasis on nurturing worshipers and and not you know not just worship team members you know worshipers so first and foremost we understand that yes we are nurturing worshipers you know in church everyone we are nurturing worshipers people to become worshipers of god in the truest sense right um and i think a beautiful example of um the woman who comes and and uh, you know pours out that most expensive perfume at the feet of jesus so we see that hey it's not about a song it's not about something that was said but it was really an act of surrender a posture of the heart and right, of an act of total humility an act of generosity right so we see that so we are what are we doing we are nurturing worshipers people who would worship the lord in spirit and in truth so can we have a like a road map and uh, and with with you know specific uh, focus on worship team members can we have a road map okay so if you look at that um, you know in the notes you would see there is a there is a diagram there right okay so the first part of it of course is to see that um everyone is rooted in the word of god see there are three main things like right? one is growing in the word the spirit living a godly life growing as a worshipper commit being committed to the local body now these are things that are constant in the sense these are this needs to be consistent right growing in the word you don't you never stop stop growing in the word of god what does it mean to say you know what is what do we mean when we say growing in the word when we say when we say growing in the word yeah um so consistently growing in an increasing knowledge not just knowledge but revelation relationship with the lord you know which is a ever increasing thing you know ever um, you know uh, that is consistent continuous thing right so uh, uh, and and when a person does that that person experiences growth okay for example if you look at um, uh, paul's letter to timothy paul gives this um uh, instruction right and he says um first uh, timothy chapter 4 and verse 16 right he says take heed to yourself and to the doctrine continue in them okay so which means that it's not a one time thing but you continue make it part of your life okay if you look at the previous verse meditate on these things verse 15 meditate on these things give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all 
Okay, so two things we see there. He's saying, you know, you meditate, you give yourself entirely. Give yourself to the Word of God. Give yourself entirely to knowing, to reading, to, uh, you know, growing in the understanding of it. Give yourself. Don't hold back, right? And then he says that your progress may be evident, which means that when you give yourself, when you meditate on the Word of God, when you give yourself to the Word of God, there is going to be progress. Like in your spiritual life, there will be progress. Progress means something that is ever uh, increasing, right? You're making some kind of movement. You're going ahead. That is progress, right? So life is being fruitful. You're making advancement, right? So that is the progress. So saying there will be progress is what we see, right? And that progress is going to be evident to all in the sense it's not going to be like a something that's hidden. Like the Lord said, you know, if you light a lamp, you don't go, you're not going to put it hidden under a vessel. So it's not something that's going to be hidden, but it's going to be evident for all, which means it's going to be put on display. People will see it. People will see it, notice, and say that, hey, this person, there is something different. This person is growing. Right? So, so these three things, like growing in the word, in the spirit, growing as a worshiper, and being also committed to the local body is something that needs to be consistent, basic foundation. Right? So we need to help the worshiper in these things. They might have some questions. They might be, um, you know, there might be all kinds of ideas about about church itself. You know, why should I be part of a church? Why should I be committed to a church? Right? Any answers? Why should you be part of a local church? Basic question. Why can't I just visit churches? I'm a global believer. <laughs> the whole world is my church. Why can't I just you know keep going everywhere? Any any thoughts? You can use the mic also. Because we need a community who uh, guides us, who prays for us, who nurtures us. And also, when we keep on changing from one church to different churches, we won't be stable, like in the teachings wise, or we won't grow much. Mm. Okay, community growth, teaching wise, okay, input receiving, and yeah. Local church, we having a belonging as mm. part of uh, the Christ body. We are, we are belong to somewhere and again nurturing I and mean, all this hmm. yeah belonging okay right any other thoughts yeah pastor uh, what prince would have said it's so important to uh, be a part of local church because groom together and hmm. learn something like from, from local church hmm. like so, suppose in your church somebody comes and asks pastor why why should I come here every Sunday? <laughs> why, you know, that is also they are also preaching Jesus. They are also preaching Jesus. You know, like four Sundays are there in a month. I'll go to one church. This, this, this. But I think that will be not good. Huh? That will be not. Yeah. Good. So the, we need to be able to explain why. Because, uh, like, if we will go there and there, like, what's happening in there? So we cannot uh, achieve that things. Uh -huh. Maybe we won't grow that much. Also, just we will be rounding only. <laughs> yeah. Mm, see yeah but so we can say like if we'll be part of one church we're the part of the family kind of if we'll go here there like we'll not part of anything we're just attending mm. but if we we'll continue to go one church we're the family kind of mm. and we'll know everything about the family and, and they will know everything about us so that's why it's important I guess Pastor, to visit to to part of the uh, one church is very important. Mm. Mm. You have any thoughts, uh, Francis? Related to that, yeah. And like, I will, I would like to ask to that person, where you want to roam? Why do you want to go? Yeah. Mm. So, and I will answer like this: hey, This is the fellowship. This is the family. If you roam here and there, there will be no fellowship. Mm for you and the interceders are from one church if you go to one church they won't remember you also mm -hmm. you? so you should be mm -hmm. rooted in your own place yeah yeah so see uh one thing to understand keep in mind is when we say local church 
it is the body of Christ, right? So that's the picture we get from 1 Corinthians 12. One body, many members, yes. So then most people say, you know, I'm already part of the spiritual body of Christ globally. You know, why should I be restricted? Don't restrict me. Don't hold me back in one place. You know, I want to be everywhere. Fine. But then that being part of the spiritual body of Christ, how do we meaningfully express that is in the local church in terms of you know ministry, in terms in terms of serving, helping one another, in terms of growing, right? All that happens in the context of a local church. Right? There's no there's, there's no problem in visiting, but you need to belong in one place. You need to. So what happens is when you're committed in one place, then like all of you shared, yeah, you belong there. There's community there. You get to know the you know it's a church, it's a family. You get to know because. Paul writes, you know, this is a household of faith, household meaning family, right? So, so he talks to Timothy and he says, you know, this is a household of faith. So that is the, another the expression that's a household, it's a family. So, yes, we need to be part of it. The other thing is also in terms of ministry, in terms of growing in ministry, in terms of serving, how does one trust you, right? How does one trust you enough? To entrust you with responsibilities right? as a leader. How? It is only when you prove that by being committed to one place, saying, okay, I'm here to serve, I'm here, and people need to know you. People need to, you know, understand this is who you are, and maybe even receive correction, give correction, right? All that happens in the context of a local church. So for you, for one, a person to be Growing as a leader, one has to be committed. Otherwise, leadership, yeah, maybe immature leaders can entrust, you know, leadership to people who are not committed, but that is always going to be a dangerous thing. You know, it's going to be damaging for that particular local church, right? So one has to be committed in order to be entrusted with even leadership, to be able to trust you and say, okay, I trust you with these people. And I've seen you. And when Paul talks about, you know, uh, one has to be, should not be a novice. One needs to be mature. So all these, how does one know unless they observe? And how do they observe unless you are consistent, committed, right? So it takes time, but this is how it is, right? So that is why this commitment to the local church is not something to imprison a person and say, you know, this is it. You put you in chain, you put in a prison, this is a jail, you can't go in. No, it's not that. It is so that the person, we can know the person, the person can also understand, hey, is this where God really wants me to be? Understand the vision of the church and grow with the teaching, with whatever they're receiving, and also grow in leadership. You know, from a disciple, from a believer to a disciple to a minister, it happens in the context of a local church right so so that is why you know over and over again we say okay there needs to be commitment for anybody who's serving uh, especially in a team like worship ministry which is visible which is uh, you know which is a very important aspect of you know spiritual life of the church so it is very important okay so um, you know if you further look at the diagram first thing is to help people grow spiritually Right, which means that they are coming, they are attending. Uh, the basics, the foundations are laid. The other things, um, you know, uh, some of those doctrinal teachings of um, who God is, salvation, uh, you know, uh, sin, forgiveness. Um, what else? Identity in Christ, Holy Spirit. You know, all these teachings, one needs to be, uh, one needs to have a firm grip on, or you know, they need to be growing in it, growing in understanding of it. So, so spiritual preparation is first and foremost, right? So they grow, as, grow spiritually, grow as worshippers also, and uh, in the in establishing commitment to the local church. And then comes the other aspect of being prepared for ministry, being qualified, or you know, with, with regard to their skill and gifting for the ministry and so on, right? So 
the other stages, you know, like what we see is um, orientation and training and then ongoing growing um, in training and, and all that comes later, right? So, so uh, you know, this is also connected to the other diagram that we looked at, you know, that those seven levels, right? So it's connected to that. So when a person grows in this, we are also growing up in our experiencing of God's presence in our ministry in facilitate, facilitating others to experience the or inviting others to experience the presence of God right so yeah so this is uh, connected to that right um, so it's a path it's an intentional path that we can take our worship team you know it, it need not be a you know some of sometimes we think okay it needs to be a huge team no it, it can be just a bunch of people maybe four people five people but the team can actually grow in strength can grow as worshipers grow in skill grow in spiritual you know uh, going grow spiritually um, knowledge of the word and so on and therefore the progress will be evident to all right okay so let's look at uh, the another um, aspect the, that is the we looked at the spirit, organizational aspect the development of the team etc so let's look at um the sorry yeah so let's look at the spiritual aspects some of the spiritual aspects of the worship ministry in the local church okay so one thing we need to understand is that the worship ministry has a direct impact uh, spiritual impact uh, on the congregation whether we like it or not right whether we are aware of it or not whether we understand it or not next to preaching of the word the ministry of the word and prayer you know this has impact impact meaning there is it has its effect right is it has its influence on the congregation so if it is done rightly, it has great impact. So impact can be negative as well as positive, right? It can be positive, it can be negative. So which means that if it is taken lightly, if it is not you know, done, uh, if it is done in a very frivolous manner, maybe not taken seriously, um, then it has its impact, right? Which means that people have a shallow experience of worship they're in the same place people have a superficial uh, experience of you know, where, where god is inviting us the lord is inviting us saying hey there is more <coughs> excuse me but then there is a very superficial shallow experience of all that god has you know we're not really taking the congregation or moving uh, into all that god has for us and so um it has spiritual impact we need to understand that so which means that you know if you look at a team of maybe two people maybe three people or if it's you know a huge team of maybe 30 40 whatever you need to understand that the worship ministry the worship has spiritual impact on the congregation so it has to be done right uh, it has to be you know done uh, with uh, giving it giving it the importance right um, so that is something that we need to understand. So therefore, this whole thing of preparation, having the right people, right, all that is very, very important, right? Um, the lifestyle of the person, everything is important. Okay. Uh, here are some things that we can, you know, look at. As a worship team, we are worshippers both on stage and off stage. Okay. So that is something that needs to be ingrained in every member of the worship team. See, worship is not a switch that you put on when you just go on a Sunday morning, go in front or go before the behind the mic, stand behind the mic. No, it's not a switch that you put on. It's not something that you, you know, and then the rest of the week you live with that switch off. No, it's not like that. Now, I remember this... Um, uh, you know, this, uh, I think it was Pastor Bill Johnson, and he's going to an, one place for ministry, and then 
his daughter-in-law is sitting next to him and they're also traveling you know lead, lead, she leads worship right so so she makes this comment you know okay now mummy mummy uh, they have children little children so she says okay mummy hat off now worship hat on meaning i have to put off take off that mummy parenting cap off now i have to put on the worship cap on <laughs> okay she makes that comment and then bill johnson turns around and says he says something you know he says that the worship cap was never meant to be taken off right this is when that's on all the time it's never meant to be taken off and then like she narrates this incident um so the thing is that we are never off sometimes we think okay if i'm off stage uh then i can do whatever i want i can behave in a certain you know different way but on stage i have to put on an act right you have just you just need to be yourself both on and off right it's it's one life that you live so why put on a mask right so um so the, the, that's something that we need to understand so we need to um, you know also tell the people that i tell the team that see sunday you can't be something else and monday someone else you know it's your lifestyle it's your lifestyle of worship so what you live monday to saturday you bring and let that be an overflow uh, let it be a lifestyle of worship let it not be something that you perform on a sunday morning so if just imagine if every person in the team gets that right understands that gets the vision then truly it will be very different right and we know you know it's a excuse me it's a question of maturity like people we have very young people you could have people who are going through you know challenges difficulties you know health issues mental health issues all those challenges are there we we understand that right but people need to understand and really get this that um whether i'm on stage or i'm off stage i'm a worshipper right so it's not like you know i put on a very expressive form of worship i'm lifting hands and all that and then if i'm in the congregation i'm just standing like this <laughs> for the same song which previous sunday i led you know both hands up and oh i'm no. but then in the congregation i'm just looking around put hands in my pocket no you know you are a worshipper you are a worshipper in spirit and truth whether you are on stage or off stage you know that's very important right okay? uh, the second thing we also you know here, these are some things that we you know tell the worship team uh, who was joining and who was there you know um, that we are not a talented group okay we are not talented group using our skills to perform using our skills musical skills to entertain using our using our musical skills to please people right we are not here to perform we are not here to entertain we are not here to please people okay we are here to delight the heart of god you know that's the vision right we are delight the heart of god in unrestrained worship please god's heart in unrestrained worship so keep that as the focus so don't do songs just to entertain people don't do songs just to please them or you know uh, perform for the sake oh you know it's a nice song skillful song we do it no while it might be a you know skilled song it might be a it might be a great song um, musically all that but the heart of it is that hey, i'm here to please god with this you know the message of the song the you know everything you know it could be you know some songs are very light hearted right very you know it it may not be very strong theologically it might not be you know like um full of scripture but it's it's got a good theme but in terms of words and expression it could be modern language right um any i'm just trying to think you know a song like yes lord i'm trading my sorrow i'm trading my sickness i'm trading my thing for the joy of the lord you know it's it's not a very i mean it's it's it's, it's a very profound truth right but it's a very light hearted song when you sing it so that does not mean that you are there to entertain with that song and you're not here to please people or perform right it means that you're still declaring that truth and ev- inviting everybody to declare that truth about what happened on the cross right in fact 
some of the you know some of the songs that we sing in children's church right uh, i'm just thinking of this song called uh, and we, we normally teach our babies children no jesus loves me this i know right you heard that song jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong uh, very simple everybody sings but the truth of it is very profound right so just because you know it's a light hearted song doesn't mean that hey, you know just take it easy or just singing it so that people can be happy no right so we're not pleasing people with it but you know and also the whole thing of talent you know we're not here to showcase our talent you know that's a fine line right we need to use our skill whether it's vocally whether it's uh, instrument wise we need to use our skill we need to do it well but at the same time that is not the whole point right so uh, if the team gets that understand that then it's a big you know it's a big shift right so the team could be yeah practicing they could be personally you know doing a lot of things training getting that skill level uh, you know to uh, you know that sharpening it but if the team understands yeah i'm I, i have to be good at this but it's not all about this they could be spending hours you know going for classes and you know all that but then when they understand that it's not all about this that's a big shift right uh, and if every team member gets that uh, it's a big win right okay so the third thing is 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 that we are not just a skillful music band or excellent church band that sings spiritual songs okay yeah you know i'm i happen to be a believer now i i know that you know i don't want to sing any other kind of songs uh, so i i've got this skill i've got this talent i've got this ability so i'm just going to sing spiritual songs now that's also not the part no that's not also the focus the thing is to offer it as worship unto god so the the objective being worship okay so um so while we look at it we are on stage we are worshipers who worship god with our gifts skills and we invite the congregation invite others the church to join as we worship god ourselves right so many times the the worship leader or the team you know makes it the point to lead others in worship you know you do this No, I want you to do it. I want you to do this. Right? You sing this. You sing it again. You lift your voice, lift your hands, and do it, and etc. So it's about always leading others, always directing others, in always instructing others. But what about yourself? <laughs> right? What are you doing? Right? Um, so you can't sound like one, you know, an exercise instructor, gymnastics instructor. Right? Uh, do this. Do that. No. So. we need to lead ourselves we need to lead ourselves in whatever we are instructing we need to lead ourselves in worshiping god right first and foremost so that is why we're saying you know we are worshipers um and we facilitate others invite others to join in the worship that uh, that we ourselves are offering to god okay okay so three areas of uh, responsibility we saw that our personal life and testimony okay so um, being uh, living a godly life being vessels of honor holiness consecration and having a good testimony before man um spiritual growth okay three areas we can look at you know make it simple god's word growing in understanding making it consistent god's spirit meaning growing in intimacy uh, with the spirit of god growing in understanding of the gifts of the spirit right uh, growing in understanding of the anointing of the holy spirit depending on the anointing of the holy spirit and so on right and thirdly it is growing in our individual area of skill right see sometimes what we the mistake we make is focus on the spiritual and leave out the skill right we've heard you know and the anointing is there it doesn't matter what you sing how you sing what you play right it doesn't matter so people say that you know just focus on the anointing the rest of it it's thing the other extreme is a hey, we need to offer excellently can't you know need to be good 
And so focus on the skill and leave out the anointing. Leave out the you know the anointing of God, depending on the anointing of the Holy Spirit to lead us in worship, right? So both are wrong, right? We need to have both in place. It's not either one or the other, right? So we need to have both in place. So, uh, but the foundation being that you are a vessel of honor. Right? So that's you know that's something that I mean, living in holiness and having a godly life and also having a good testimony. Okay, then um, having a personal life of worship. Okay, so what do we mean by that personal life of worship? You know, um, of course we read the word, we pray, etc. So, but do we worship when no one is watching, when we are not publicly leading others? Do we worship the Lord in private? Okay, so this is something that. Um, you know, we are so used to reading the word, praying, but are we worshiping the Lord in private? You no, know, this is a question that um, we need to answer. You know, we need to ask ourselves. You know, am I worshiping the Lord? Uh, well, it need not be. You know, uh, it can be an extended time where you're just spending the time just worshiping the Lord. Um, and uh, you know, if you're a musician, you have your guitar, you have your keyboard, whatever, just spending time, um, just worshiping the Lord. Right, and so many times we 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 think that okay, I need to give one hour or forty five minutes, and I don't have it, therefore I cannot. You know, I don't want to give that. What about that ten minutes? What about that fifteen minutes? You no, know, it can start right. What about when you are commuting? It can, right? It can even be that time, right? So, um, again, to reiterate. We, we tell the team as well, you know, we are not, we are, the worship team is not for talented musicians. You know, many times we say, you know, hey, you, you can play this. Hey, you need to be in the team. You know? So uh, you're, you're playing your instrument well, you need to be in the team, right? Well, the worship team is not for talented musicians. Yes, you know, it will greatly help. But we're saying, you know, are you a worshiper? Right? Are you a worshiper? We need to. We can have talented musicians, skilled people, but are you a worshiper? Are they worshippers? Right. So if they are teachable, well, they can grow in that. Right? They can grow in the skill. They can grow in the uh, whole thing of worship. Right? So growing in skill and worship is very important. Uh, growing in Christ-likeness and serving with humility. Okay. See, worship. You know, I mean, the way it, the urban church is right. Contemporary urban church, we see that the worship ministry, well, it comes with a lot of visibility. By that I mean, like uh, most contemporary urban churches, it's it's on a race platform. So the worship team is there; it's highly visible. Everybody is on the team, on the stage, visible. Maybe the church streams the service. There's some recording. Which goes on social media, visible again. You know, during the week, there are snippets of the you know worship time that is put, and it's highly visible. People see people. So, every member in the team needs to understand that. At the end of the day, you know, despite all the lights and fancy things that are there, at the end of the day, you're a servant. At the end of the day, you are a servant. Are you in the worship team? Yeah, you are the lead servant. Right? So, if if we can get our team to understand that, hey, we are not celebrities, right? Because we are on stage. Um, though, you know, in certain places, it's it's treated like a celebrity. Right? I know one music. I saw one music video where the singers come in a helicopter. I don't know if you've seen. You know, not in the church, but it's a music video. Singers come in a helicopter and they're driving some fancy cars and you know all those things. Uh, um, I, I know they're nice people, but you know they, they made the music video like that. You know they arrive in in one island in one helicopter and probably you know the names of the people also. <laughs> driving one you know very fancy cars and just for the sake of the video. But what happens is like people watch it and then they feel like hey, this is how it is. You know, and then sometimes. You know, in these worship concerts, people make a grand entry. 
right uh, for the full you know like like a very cinematic entry you know with lights and everything and then suddenly spotlight and smoke and you see the person there and everybody is like oh so you know the, so people come you know with this kind of a celebrity entitlement okay i need to be treated a certain way hey, where's my bottle of water you know entitled right for all these things so but we need to understand that hey take that off take it off it's not going to be helpful the whole celebrity status and celebrity um you know the kind of a entitlement no you understand that you are serving be ready to sweep the place be ready to put the chairs be ready to do that right so christ likeness serving serving with humility okay very important um and secondly our identity now this is another big area right suppose you they take the guitar away from you they take the drum kit away from you or you know who are you are you you know without the guitar without the keyboard you are like oh i'm very nervous i need to go you know i need to hold on to it it's part of my image no you know where is your identity you know, we need to ask our teams right um where is your identity is it are you known as this person who plays you know the keyboardist or the guitarist or a uh, drummer or vocalist you know, all these titles fancy things right so what is your identity you know where do you get your self worth from where do you get your you know a uh, whole identity from is it from being a child of god is it from being a servant who serves in this kind of area of ministry right god is the one who gives us right in these kind of opportunities and it's a privilege to serve him but so we need to understand right? um where is my identity because if our identity is on the music we play the songs we sing and you know being known as a singer or a musician no then that's going to be a problem right it's so it's i our identity the team's identity is not in the gifting okay very important so which means that they need to have time um maybe as a team away from their instruments or away from you know they need to have time to sit and talk and maybe fellowship maybe grow in the word away from what they are doing right so uh, it's very very important um i remember once in a worship team retreat uh, all of us just sat with our bibles i think there were about 40 40 odd people just sitting in a circle and um uh, and then we just said okay um, right we're going to worship the lord so all the instruments were there in the right in the center you know there was one tabla there was one um, you know all the instruments were there but nobody said there nobody is touching it you know you just sit by yourself um we're going just going to pass the mic okay so it was very difficult for some right you pass the cordless mic and you're saying okay what do you want to tell god if the lord is sitting with you or if you are let's say sending a text message to the lord what do you want to tell him right it's a time of just prayer and worship honest just going to focus on that and you won't believe it you know we spent about an hour just doing that just talking and and i heard people who never open their mouths never open their mouths you know to say even one hallelujah you know just going on just talking to the lord because from their heart they're saying okay this is who you are lord i thank you this is this is who you are this is who you know what you mean to me being very honest so we did that for an hour and after that okay we said okay would you like to sing it right whatever you're doing you know, would you like to sing musicians just go to your music to your you know instruments and maybe you would like to play something you know which which actually expresses the worship that is in your heart so we did that for some time and just found that it was such an enriching time of worship being offered to god right so it was not just based on the song it was not just and there were others also who were you know we had this sheets of paper and chart paper and you know people who could actually express it in artistic ways you know why don't you just go and 
you know, paint something or express your heart to God. And this, this is beautiful. So maybe about two and a half hours or three hours went by in worship with the team. And so it was a very powerful time of understanding that Worship is not about a song. Worship is not about performance. Um, you know, what worship is, it's not, my identity is not in my gifting, but what I actually offer to the Lord, right? So, you know, so, so the team needs to have those times away from their area of expertise, but just being a believer, just being a child of God and, uh, you know, offering that worship to God, right? Okay, um, you know, if you look at uh, these five foundational, you know, to make it simple, five foundational areas of focus, we can say, okay, these five things, core, uh, it's in, you know, it's all, everything starts with C, right? Core, which means, okay, uh, how to truly worship God in spirit and truth, right? That's the core, John chapter 4, 23, 24, the Lord taught us, told us, taught us. Um, so that we keep it as the core of it, which means the center of it, right? Second thing, character, right? Our conduct. Uh, are we Christ-like as we worshippers of uh, Jesus, worshippers of the Lord? Right? Third one is craft. Craft meaning our skill. Okay, Are we working on a skill? Are we working on it? Are we building it? Fourth one is about fellowship. You know, How do we engage with each other as a, as a team and the congregation in ministry? Like, so we say chemistry, meaning, okay, there could be some you know, rough edges, there could be some conflicts, right? So these need to be, these need to be addressed, these need to be worked on, right? And lastly, community, right? Understanding that you're part of a bigger picture. You're not an exclusive, um, you know, group by yourself, but you're part of the bigger picture. You're part of the life of the church, and um, everyone matters, right? So you're part of the uh, bigger community. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll stop here and take a break. But any um, questions before we do that? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we'll take a break, and then we'll get back. Right. Okay.